This is the Rubik's Cube, but this is the 4D Rubik's Cube because every sticker, side, and turn quite literally has an extra dimension to it. So how is this even possible and how does it work? To better understand this, let's hop back into 3D. And because it's in 3D, we can express the location of every sticker or piece using just three coordinates. For instance, if we want to give a location for this sticker here, we can call it the upfront right sticker. Up because it's on the upper face, front because it's on the front line of the upper face, and right because it's on this point of the front line. And notice how we reduce a dimension every single time. And now pause the video to try to find where left down back is. And so left is just this left face here, down would be this down line here, and back would just be the sticker here. And we can also project this 3D puzzle down to 2D like this. This might look a little strange, but you can still clearly see the upper face, the front line of the upper face, and the rightmost point of the front line. And same for left down back here. And in this specific projection, we can only see five out of the six sides, but we already know that there's a back side that's out of view, which is here. And of course, in the normal cubic view, you can see the back side just by turning it like this. Now we're going to go back to the 4D Rubik's Cube. And as you can see, seven out of the eight sides are in view. The eighth one being the pink side, which once again, if we rotate, um, we can see which is the pink one. And much like how what you saw before was a 2D projection of a 3D Rubik's Cube, this is a 3D projection of a 4D Rubik's Cube, which is how we're able to show it in a way we can comprehend. And the reason why all the pieces and stickers are spaced apart is that if you have them close like normal 3D Rubik's Cube, um, we can't really see most of it. And it just looks weird. And to indicate the location of a sticker now, we need four coordinates. So for instance, this sticker here, which is the equivalent of what we talked about in three dimensions, is the upper inside front right sticker. Upper because it's on the upper cell. Um, cell is just what we call sides in four dimensions. And then inside because we now have an additional inside cell here and it's face. So talking about this 2D face facing the inside. And then front because we're talking about the front line of this face facing the inside and then the right point of the front line once again and once again pause the video to see if you can find the left inside down back sticker so once again we're talking about the left 3d cell and then this is the inside cell so reducing it down to 2d face of stickers facing the inside cell and then the 1d line on the bottom of that face and then the 0d point on the back so, so far I've only focused just on the stickers of the pieces, but in this program, if I have my cursor over one sticker, you'll notice that a few other stickers are highlighted as well. This is to show that the stickers are a part of the same piece. So if I take apart the puzzle, you'll see that this is the up front right piece. So this is the sticker we talked about, but all of these are part of the up front right piece. And same with the left down back piece here. It's a bit hard to see the other stickers unless I rotate the cube because they're out of view. And you can see it here as well. That's the sticker we talked about and here are all the stickers attached to the same piece. And in the 2D projection of the 3D cube, if I put my cursor over the up front right sticker, you can see all the other stickers that form the up front right piece. And once again, we know this is the left down back sticker. And like I was showing before, we have another sticker that's out of view, which you can now see the orange. And going back to four dimensions, if we talk about the same up inside front right sticker we were talking about before, you'll now see there are four stickers highlighted because the corner pieces now have four colors on them. And once again, pause the video to try to find all the stickers that are attached to the left inside down back piece. And here it is. So all the highlighted stickers here. Also, so far I've only talked about the corner pieces of the Rubik's Cube, but on the edges, you can also see there are edge pieces, each with two colors on them. And inside the Rubik's Cube, there is a core with six center pieces attached to it, which indicate the color that each side must be when solved. And once again, going back to the 2D projection of a 3D cube, the idea of how all the stickers connect the pieces, as well as the center stickers connecting to the core, aren't very obvious, but it is important to keep in mind. And going back to four dimensions, it's what looks like the quote-unquote core of all of these cells. 
So this is the center indicating that this whole cell should be blue. This is the center of the red cell indicating this cell is meant to be red and so on. So it all sort of attached like maybe a 4D core, but once again, we can't really see it. And these highlighter stickers here are equivalent to this blue red edge piece of the Rubik's cube. And once again, there's like a third sticker, which is that of the inside cell. And there's a fourth piece type that doesn't exist on a normal Rubik's Cube, which I believe is called a ridge. And you can sort of see the two stickers highlighted, which are connected to one piece. And bear in mind, much like looking at the Rubik's Cube from one angle, knowing that there are a bunch of stickers you can't see on the other side, um, it's similar on this projection where, once more, there's a bunch of pieces out of view. And this extra dimension means there are 72 movable pieces around eight center pieces. But of course, in order to solve this puzzle, we can't just leave the pieces as is. We have to like actually move the stickers and pieces around. So on the Rubik's Cube, every basic turn on the puzzle involves turning one face 90 degrees. And notice how I'm not just moving the stickers on one face, but all of the stickers on the sides as well. More specifically, four corners and four edges, which never overlap with each other. And while there are other types of turns you can do as well, like turning this middle layer, you can pretty much achieve the same thing by doing two basic turns and then rotating the whole cube like this. And here's me doing some basic turns just on the 2D projection, just so you have a better feel of how it works when I move into 4D. So on 4D, every turn kind of looks like a basic 90 degree turn of the cube, like that, that, or that. But notice how um, much like on the 3D Rubik's Cube where we're turning all of the stickers on the sides as well as the face, we're turning all of the adjacent cell stickers like as you can see here. And not just the cube in the middle. And this is basically the same as the turn we did before, but one of the cells is out of view so it's hard to see everything that's happening. It's kind of like how when I'm turning like the back face here, you might be able to see yellow pop up here, maybe green, but you can't see all of the other like changes that are happening. So it's kind of similar when I turn this cell here. And once again, there's some other fancy stuff you can do. Like if I click on this edge piece here, it'll do whatever this is, which kind of looks like I'm doing like this or something. But once again, you can do a bunch of just like normal looking turns to bring it back to its original solve state. Just like this, and then that twice maybe. And as you can imagine, every turn moves a lot more pieces than the normal Rubik's Cube. So all of the ones listed here. And if you know how to solve a normal Rubik's Cube, these numbers should seem very familiar as they correspond to the exact pieces that the normal Rubik's Cube has. So in short, if you know how to solve a Rubik's Cube already, then I definitely recommend trying to learn how to solve this puzzle. I'll put some further links in the description below. And this software by Hacter, I think that's how you pronounce the name, is in the description as well. Otherwise, subscribe for more cool content and otherwise, bye.